The first reading for the second Sunday in Easter is from Acts chapter 4. The full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of these things that belonged to him was his own. But they had everything in common, and with great power the apostles were given their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. O Lord, have mercy upon us. The epistle is from 1 John chapters 1 and 2. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and we testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from Him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with Him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for also the sins of the whole world. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so am I sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Sing to the Lord and bless His name. Proclaim His salvation from day to day. Yeah. 
Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The basis for our sermon this morning is the Gospel lesson. It is the traditional Gospel reading the second Sunday after Easter. Every year we read the same Gospel reading. It's the upper room that Easter evening where Jesus came and showed himself to the disciples. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus our Lord, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We who are of the 21st century can look back on those of the 1st century and we might shake our fingers at those disciples and question them why they did not believe that Jesus would rise from the dead. But I, I am sure many of you, if we lived back in those days, we would have had the same, same circumstances, the same outcome, the same emotions as those disciples did on that first Easter evening. Now what had happened that Easter day, that first Easter day? The women went to the tomb expecting to find a dead body, but what did they find? They didn't find a dead body, they found an empty tomb. In fact, they ran back and told the disciples that Jesus was not there. In fact, Mary Magdalene had a conversation with the risen Lord and Savior and went back and told the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And if that wasn't enough, later that afternoon, there were some disciples making their way to Emmaus. And as they were walking along, the stranger came up to them and started to talk to them and asked them why they were so sad. And they go, are you the only one who has not seen what was going on in Jerusalem these past three days? And Jesus says, what? And they talked about how Jesus came and he suffered and he died. And now there was these words going around, these rumors that Jesus had risen from the dead. And along the road, Jesus had a conversation with them, opening up the Old Testament scriptures to them to show them that Jesus was truly the Messiah, the Savior who has come. And then Jesus eventually revealed himself to those disciples, and they recognized the risen Lord and Savior. And they too, those disciples, ran back to Jerusalem and said, We have seen the Lord. He is talking to us. And now on that Easter evening, the disciples, as John says, were in the upper room, behind locked doors because of the fear of the Jews. They were afraid. They heard the rumors that were going on. One of the rumors going around is that the disciples came and stole the body of Jesus to show, aha, he's risen. But the disciples were afraid. If, if they did to Jesus, what they did, there was no doubt that they would do the same thing to his followers, to his disciples. So they were afraid. They were scared. And yet, what does Jesus do? He comes in the midst of their fear, behind those locked doors, to show himself to the disciples. What fear are you living in? What locked doors may you have in your life? I think many of us have the fear of the unknown. What's out there? The fear of the future. What's going to happen? I was on, out of town for a couple days, and, and uh, at the hotel, I was reading an article in USA Today. Very interesting article about some of the effects of COVID-19. And it wasn't not just necessarily the physical effects, but it was the mental effects that it's having on people. The article talked about how these doctors are prescribing at high rates uh, anxiety medication to their patients and antidepressants. They've never seen such cases of anxiety and antidepressants throughout the whole history of since they've been keeping tabs on those things. People are afraid. They don't know what's going to go on. Will we have to wear the mask forever? Will we be able to take the mask off? What will we be able to do and not to do? Can we gather together at closer as families, or do we still have to remain at our distance? All those things are going on, and maybe you don't even have a fear, though. Maybe you have the fear of other things going on in your life. Like I mentioned before, the fear of the unknown, the fear of the future. What's God have in store for me? It's in the midst of your fears that Jesus comes to you and says the exact same thing he told the disciples on that first Easter evening. He said to them, Peace be unto you. He brings peace. Jesus talked a lot about peace before his death and resurrection. 
In, the, in John's Gospel alone, I counted at least 20 times when Jesus mentioned peace to his disciples. He says, peace I give to you, peace I leave unto you, not as the world is do I give unto you, but this is the peace that comes from God the Father. Remember the angels on that Christmas Eve when they came to the shepherds and they said, peace on earth, goodwill towards men will this babe that was born in Bethlehem bring. Even Paul in Philippians, he says, now may the peace that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That peace comes from Jesus, but that peace came with the price. That peace came with Jesus' own sacrifice on the cross for you, so that you could have the forgiveness of all your sins. With Jesus, your sins are forgiven. With Jesus, you have peace with God the Father. And with that, you have eternal life and salvation. It's very interesting that when Jesus entered into the room, he said, Peace be unto the, to you, to the disciples. The first thing he did was show his hands and his side. The places where he bared the marks of his crucifixion. And we are told that the disciples were glad. That we're glad in Greek. We translate it better as rejoice. They rejoiced in seeing the risen Lord and Savior. They were glad. They rejoiced. Even put this way, they were happy. Because now... Jesus said, oh, I'm going to suffer and die and going to rise again. What Jesus said was true. When we live in that peace that God gives to us, one of the natural responses, spiritual responses, is that we rejoice. We give thanks. We are glad in the gifts that God has given to us. Rejoice, Jesus says. Rejoice in knowing that your sins are forgiven. That because Jesus died and rose, we can say with great confidence, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And that gives us great joy in knowing that Jesus did that. Now I say that, that Christ did rise from the dead. And yes, I say that because I believe he physically, bodily rose from the dead. With some, some spiritual sense, but that he was actually risen from the dead. But with saying that, when we say that Jesus rose from the dead, we are also confessing with that comes the forgiveness of our sins. One of the things that Jesus told his disciples, and we hear that in the upper room, he breathes in them the Holy Spirit, and he says, just as the Father has sent me, I'm going to send you, and your job, your task, is to proclaim the forgiveness of sins in Christ Jesus. He told the disciples to do that. And that's what the disciples did. We are here because of what the, the mandate, the sending that the disciples did. Someone told you along the way that God loves you and that he's forgiven you all your sins. Now he wants you to do the same. We will leave this place this morning and we are going to go out into this world. A world that pretty much rejects Jesus. And the great love that he has for all people. Just like he sent the disciples into their world and the message of God's hope and forgiveness. You are being sent. God has placed people in your lives that he wants you to share with them in the midst of their fear that God brings them peace. That Jesus comes and brings them peace with the forgiveness of all their sins. There's someone that you might know that needs to hear that. I want you to share this good news of the resurrection. I want you to share with them God's peace and that God has forgiven them their sins. If you don't do it, who will? God wants you to do that. He wants to send you out to do that in the midst of our fears so that we can rejoice, so that we can share the good news of God's forgiveness with all people. Yes, God did rise from the dead. Jesus rose from the dead. That's why we can say with great joy, Christ is risen. He is he risen indeed. Hallelujah. And that's the great joy that we have as God's people. The resurrection's happened. Now what? Now we get to tell others and share the good news of God's salvation with all people. One more time. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, 
Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our hymn of praise. 